So, the first episode is a master class in effective networking. These people are my friends. They are masters at networking. They are the people that I go to for my advice. When I'm like, hey, what should I do? They're like, do this, do that. I'm like, hey, can you hook me up with, oh, here you go, already connected. And I'm like, okay, all right? So I hope that you guys walk away with some sound advice, some great knowledge that you can take with you to make great informed decisions. So if you can join me in welcoming our panelists, bringing them up to the stage, round of applause. Come on up. Let's do another round of applause. All right. You know, we're gonna we're gonna just project. I think we can do that. I know most people usually like to focus on networking dudes. We're gonna switch it up. All right. We are going to talk about the dopes. Because I feel like a lot of people don't cover that, right? And they don't get real and candid with the conversations. So let's run through the line really quickly. I'm just curious to hear, off the top of your head, what is the number one turn off when it comes to people networking with you and they're reaching out to you? I'm feeling the eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, I'm allergic to so much, so <laughs> let us begin with this. Y'all get ready to take notes with Tracy. Like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then, All right, so very generic copy and paste a uh, bland need of desperate seasoning, just littering me with misspellings, DM messages. <laughs> That's what it is. Can y'all tell she's a wordsmith? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ansel? Uh, not as dramatic as that. <laughs> I think my main one would be like not knowing what I do. I get hit a lot of times. I was talking this earlier with Lee. I was like saying, I work at Complex. I've never been so popular on LinkedIn. And people think, oh, you work at Complex, music, sneakers, whatever. I don't handle that. So know what I deal with, because it's not for me. I'm not going to respond if that's something that I have to deal with. That's the main pet people I have. This isn't for me. It's junk mail. Mm -hmm. That's basically what it is. Um, my main pet peeve is DMs, period. Like, don't slot to my DMs for oh, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. like, like, DMs is for and giggles. It's not for like professional stuff at all. Okay, and Lee? Yeah, so I think the big thing for me is there's this phrase I hate called, let me pick, can I pick your brain? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Lee. Look, I think there, there are genuine, authentic times for that to happen. But if you haven't, you know, really thought about what you want to talk to me about, you don't frame it in a way that's relevant for me. Mm -hmm. It is based on my expertise and what I know about. And you don't make it specific enough. Like, you know, don't tell me you want to pick my brain as a shortcut to trying to get applied to the place I work. Like, if you genuinely mm. say to me, hey, Lee, I've been, you know, I want to start this nonprofit. I've been looking at people who've done it in your sector. You seem like someone who's really knowledgeable. I want to, you know, incorporate in the next year. Can I talk to you about that? That works for me. Mm -hmm. But just saying it broadly doesn't work. So I think lack of specificity in that can I pick your brain conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pick your brain gotta be left. Yeah. Don't I mean, it was already gone, yeah. but it gotta be in the coffin now. Yeah. Okay. So Anselm, what are like your top two, the top two mistakes that you usually see made? With um cold emails? Yeah. You know, again, it goes back to not, not knowing what I do. So this, mm -hmm. this message isn't for me, because that's the main one. That uh, is your top, okay. Typos, of course, is like definitely as a writer, if you're interviewing before writing and you can't write, <laughs> That's a, a, a red flag. Yeah. And I do think, um, honestly, for me, it's like I, I get a lot of emails, a lot of communication, a lot of DMs, whatever like that. And so having a long email is something I won't deal with now. Mm -hmm. I'll deal with it later. I have a lot of things to do that relate to my work that I have to do. So getting a long email is like a way you can kind of like have a precise subject line that's captivating that catches my attention mm -hmm. and then also get to your point in a catchy way, but also captivating in that, in that sense. It's like your whole life story in that. I'll get to it eventually, but not in that moment. So that's one thing for sure. Like be precise and catch my attention. My, okay, now have a follow up and say, hey, let's talk about that. Have more information. Mm -hmm. You know, I really appreciate the fact that you mentioned how it affects you on the other end. Because I'm sure people have heard before, like, oh, I'll keep it short, but why? Because I might not read your email at all. So keep it short. <laughs> um, and that makes a lot of sense. That's, that's helpful. 
what is like the best way to someone, what, why do you say most people reach out to you on average? <laughs> Most people are actually working at Complex. It's yeah. like either for jobs on LinkedIn, I get that all the time, or I want to pick your brain. You know, if I don't know what that is, I didn't respond. So what's the you best know? thing to say? The best thing I think is like, be honest in what it is. Understand if you're a young writer and want to know about writing, know about the industry, you've seen stuff that I've done, you reference that to a degree to show that you actually know what I've done. Yep. Not just like, hey, you work at Complex, let's talk about this. And it's mm -hmm. like, I haven't done that. Or a job I had 10 years ago. It's like, I'm not a double XL, I'm mm -hmm. not a disorder, things like that. So you're not paying attention. If mm -hmm. you're not paying attention, why should I pay why attention? Why would I hide that? Yeah, right. Yeah. That's a good point. I, so, can I add to that? I also yeah. say, in making it concise, is I always say, make it easy for the person you are sending an email to to say yes. You know, don't ask, can I send you such and such? Like, send, <laughs> send them everything you think they would possibly need so they can review it at the moment and get back to you with the yes versus, like, if I've got to ask you more questions, like, yeah. okay, well, send me your resume or send me your portfolio, then it's already too much time because you're taking away from someone's time when they stop their day-to-day -day work. Like that's them stopping making money mm -hmm. to like read something that's not necessarily going to serve them. So it needs to be concise. It needs to have everything they need at that point to give you a yes, make it easy for them to say yes. Yeah. And also to add to what both Anselm and Kayla are saying, like pay attention to the formatting of the email like it has to be aesthetically pleasing to me because my eyeballs my eyeballs have just been receiving so much information yeah. throughout the day so if you hit me with a novel i'm like bro what mm -hmm. <laughs> it's my reading break it's right overwhelming. now he'd be like, oh. <laughs> yeah you know like it was even overwhelming when twitter like extended its freaking like right. letter count you know what i mean character count so i think like read your email find the pacing of it like where you take a breath is where the next mini paragraph begins you know what i mean um and that will just make it easier for the receiver to digest all of your words and make sure that you give an example of the fact which should be a fact of your actual interest by maybe if it's um complex can you hit up anselm and reference an article that was recently recently published. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just to show that you're not just um, here to chase the clout, the perception, the popularity of it, but you actually have a genuine appreciation and you want to collaborate with what you think is dope. I feel like you had a story, like, I don't know if you want to tell it here, but where you gave someone a chance or you wanted to, and then they just, they had some uh, outlandish, way of getting your attention on social uh -huh. and then you gave them a chance and it was oh, just like oh that was recently yeah okay. i didn't want to call it out but you let me know <laughs> <laughs> i think you kind of did since you sprinkled it away. Uh, i'll take your bait though it's uh, totally fine take advantage of our friendship all right so recently um i had a young man who he did something very clever to get our attention where and this he wanted an internship over at swain in the morning so he waited outside with a big, humongous sign, you know, something that you would see like go viral and then end up on your evening news. Big ass sign saying, oh, I really want to be um, an intern for Sway in the Morning. We had a, um, a broadcast that we were doing over at Caroline's. He came over to that and then he showed me the picture of him outside and I was like, okay, but that's wonderful. Go to SiriusXM.com slash internships and everything is there, right? But I promise you, like, I said this with a genuine smile on my face. There's just protocol. Like, what you want me to do? I can't yeah. remix every aspect yeah. of this professional game. Now, he did enter my DMs after. It's not too wild for me, um, but I understand where Kayla's coming from. I would prefer, especially if you are studying my persona and my profession, go to my profile to see if my email is there. But yeah. sometimes you get impulsive, you peep that I'm watching This Is Us, you're like, I am too, and you jump in my DMs. <laughs> so, he enters my DMs, we're almost towards the end of this story, by the way. I wanna respect time. He enters my DM and he's just like, Tracy, it was such a pleasure meeting you in real life, yada, yada. Here is my cover letter, my resume, can you forward it to the right person? This is all in your DMs? <laughs> oh. Now, the thing that went wrong is he spells something in like, not even a millennial way, in a Generation Z way. And I, I hit him back and I said, remember, like, I know that I may appear like this, but it's a whole different level. You cannot speak to me as if I'm your sis, bro. Especially if your sis is gonna be responsible for getting you this internship. And then, 
the dang cover letter was referenced to the last place he tried to get the internship. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my goodness, like, you won with the spectacle, you lost with the lack of substance. Right. You know what I mean? And I was like, okay, cool, everything was cute, but the realness was lacking. The professionalism was lacking. Yeah. Because right. yeah. that's what I think a lot of people forget, like, and I know, you know, Gen Z and millennials and all that stuff, but if you want these professional jobs, you have to approach people in a professional way. Yeah. Like DMs just are not cool. It's not as someone mm -hmm. DMs like, hey sis, I see you doing your thing. I'd love to be a part of this. Or, or you're even like, to whom it may concern. I'm really like, no, DMs is not the place to do that. Especially when people have their email, mostly in their bios, mm -hmm. that you can Google them. It's really easy and find them. Mm -hmm. And so you bypass that and you get, in my opinion, lazy and you slide through the DMs for something quick and convenient. And for me, it's an automatic disqualifier because you mm -hmm. just really want to rub elbows. You just really like, you, you see it. And then like, oh, I see you on the scene. I want to be on the scene too. Let's be on the scene together. No, that's not how it works. And so for me, like it has to be professional. Like you need to proofread. You need to have a concise letter. Give every, everyone what they need mm -hmm. in an email. Get to the point. Like DMs is just not it. Too many people think they can tweet and DM and make a connection. And that's, you can make a connection, but you can't think you're going to make a professional career choice or, you know, gain from that. Mm -hmm. So are you saying not to, not to, DM at all? If you DM, I think you got to DM like, oh my gosh, I love that lipstick, or this is cool, like, yo, I see you doing your thing, but like, you can cultivate a relationship right. and then move it beyond that. But like, DMs is really a place, social media is a place to be social. Mm -hmm. It is not for professional work gain, if you will. Like, it's mm -hmm. a great highlight reel. I'm on that highlight and all day long, seven time Emmy nominations all in my bio, but my my business deals and happenings are not happening in my DMs. I've yeah. never got a check in my DMs. <laughs> like the checks don't come to my DMs. Like they know email. Yeah. That's where it happens at. That's where business yeah. happens. On email. I can't slide through Katie Current's DMs and say, Can I have some of your time? No. No. When nobody, no one's gonna give me their time by sliding through their DMs. That's just not how it works. Yeah, I think you plant the seed in DM by showing you yeah. genuinely care about content. Absolutely, you know I mean? absolutely. But you water it mm -hmm. via email. Yeah.